Hello and welcome back to Serpent Sunday. As always, I'm your host, Morgan. Now, this week we're talking about an extremely rare sea snake that has been rediscovered on Western Australia's Ashmore Reef. And this particular species has been thought to be locally extinct for 23 years. But before we jump into the topic, if you want more sporadic Serpent Sunday content coming your way on a um, maybe regular basis, don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Also, don't forget to comment any of your thoughts down below. I am very interested in keeping the conversation going and responding to comments. But without further ado, let's get into this. So before we begin talking about this rediscovery, let's start with a bit of background. So previously, several species of sea snakes used to be abundant on Ashmore Reef. And then in the 90s and 2000s, the populations began to rapidly decline. And the result of this was that 17 species of sea snakes disappeared from the reef. And the species we're talking about today is one of those species. It is the short-nosed sea snake. And this is the third species to actually have been rediscovered on the edges of the reef in what is known as the twilight zone. The twilight zone is a part of the ocean that receives very little light, but it's not entirely dark and it's kind of butted up against those coastal regions or the reef regions, it's technically coastal. The point is it gets less light than other areas, but it doesn't get no light. And this is the third species of sea snake that's been thought to be gone, found in that region. So how was this discovery made? Well, there were some researchers from the Australian Institute of Marine Science that were using a robot to re look around at a depth of about 67 meters. That's about 220 feet. And what they were actually doing at the time that they noticed the snake was they were trying to pick up a shell and they noticed as they were going to pick it up something very interesting coiled up nearby. As you can see in this photo, it's kind of that coil that looks suspiciously snoodle-like and they zoomed in and when they did zoom in, they were met with this face and realized they were looking at a short-nosed sea snake. So why is this discovery exciting? Well, beyond the fact that I get excited about snakes in general, despite the fact that the asshole that lives on my dresser will sometimes pretend to be interested in the rat that I just spent an hour warming up for him, just to lose interest and go hide in his hide, and now I have to toss out the rat, but that's a different issue altogether. This discovery is exciting because when this particular species disappeared from the reef, it was actually presumed to be extinct. And that's because it was already thought to have a very small range. So when it was gone from the one area it was known to be, the most reasonable thought was to assume that it had gone extinct. But the short-nosed sea snake can kind of be split into two species or at least two populations, the coastal and the reef species. Um, in the article, they refer to them as separate species. So that's what we're going to do here. And the differences between these species are both morphological and genetic. And the only real way to tell between them is genetic testing. Now, in 2016, a few of the coastal short-nosed sea snakes were found out in the coastal regions where it makes sense for them to be. So the question here that needs to be asked now that we've seen a, a short-nosed sea snake in what is still considered the reef region is, is the snake that was found on Ashmore Reef evidence that the coastal snakes are moving into the reef? or evidence that the reef snakes have still been around, just living at a deeper depth than they were before. But how should we answer this question? Well, the only real answer would be through genetic testing. So to do that, they'd have to capture a couple snakes off of Ashmore Reef, 
get some samples, and then compare the data from the short nose reef sea snake data that they have from the past. And that's all very exciting. But we do need to kind of wrap this up a bit because I could ramble on about how exciting I am for a bit, but I will start talking in circles. So this is a bit of seemingly good news. And that makes me happy because most environmental news I read is rather bleak. And any little bit of good news to me is exciting. And while this may not be a case where we're seeing a species that has previously been thought to be extinct pop up again, one famous species that did that is the coelacanth, and that is just mind-bogglingly cool. But I mean, we're still seeing sea snakes return and potentially fill a void whether or not this ends up being the reef species or the coastal species. Even if it does turn out that these are just coastal snakes moving into the reef, we're still seeing snakes come back to the reef and fill a void. And yeah, it, it'll be sad if it is confirmed that the reef species has been lost, but focus on snakes returning. And that is a good thing, especially since the short-nosed sea snake is still extremely rare, even if it was two species. So as the climate changes and ecosystems are going to be disrupted, it's important that we take note of what species are doing as they respond and how those changes are happening. And this seems to be one way it's occurring. And if it is the reef species, it does make sense that they move down into deeper water that is presumably cooler and perhaps the shallower depths that they once inhabited just got too warm for them. But I don't know, we've got more questions than answers and I am beginning to ramble and my brain wants to begin to ramble. So I need to do the adult thing and stop myself. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your afternoon, day, evening, what have you. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you all in the next one. Thank you again for watching this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that bell if you would like to see more. And if you'd like to follow me on any of my other social medias, the links are down in the description below. Don't forget to check out thereptilegoth.com for all of my articles and blog posts. If you found any value in this video and you would like to help support the channel, please check out my Patreon page. That link is also in the description down below. And a special thanks goes out to my Diamond Dragon patron, Diane V. What you're doing is really helping me fund a dream here. I will see you guys all in the next one.